Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and we praise your holy name. Thank you so very much, Lord, for allowing us to praise and to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, your presence, Lord, being here with us. Lord, I want to pray for each family, each person who came together tithing and offering to you as an act of worship. I want to pray blessings upon them and their families. Lord, I want to pray for each person here today, Lord, they'll completely die to their will die to themselves, Lord, and open up, Lord, their spiritual ears and eyes. They can see and hear and understand, Lord, your word. I pray for myself, Lord, that I can completely die to my will. And I pray, Lord, for an unlimited portion of your anointing power, your spirit to flow through me and upon me to allow the word to flow here this morning. If there's someone here who needs to be born again or healed or set free or delivered from anything, Lord, let them accept you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is part one of a teaching. Someone asked me several weeks ago if I would teach on this, and we have over a period of time. Um, so, but, but when somebody asks me that, I always have to pray over it and wait to God to show me. And I started getting several confirmations this past week. Actually, I ended up with about four total at the end. So I'm like, okay, God, I get it. This is what you're wanting. But what God showed me was how to fight against evil. How many here knows there's evil in the world today? Okay, how many knows that it's very real, but most Christians don't know how to fight against it. They think that if they ignore it, it's going to go away. It's not going to affect, affect them. That's not true. It's still there whether you want to believe it or not. The problem is, before you learn how to fight against evil, if you know anything about warfare at all, you first have to learn about your enemy. So I could sit here all day long and show you what the scripture says about how to fight against your, your enemy, but if you don't identify and know your enemy, then you're not going to know how to fight against it. I can promise you that. And I've been through this. I can tell you the story after the story after the story of the things I've been through as a pastor. I'm talking about some very big time, big time stuff. I've been attacked by Satan himself. I've been attacked by demons, devils over the years. He's tried to kill me twice. I have seen things happen. It sounds like a horror movie you see on TV. But I've learned through all that. I even had a witch one time come up to some property where I was at, where I lived at, and this is all true stuff. Literally took a, a stake, it's a stick they have, and walked around the place and cursed it with a stick. I had no idea she did that. Even made a pin cushion of myself. Y'all have heard of that? You've seen movies of me and seen her poking needles in it. And I had no idea she did it. And for months, I'm going to the hospital back and forth. I almost lost my job, couldn't breathe, couldn't do anything until God revealed to me what was going on. Once I understood what was going on, and all it was because I was invited to a church. And I went to this church, and a guy asked me what I thought about the church. And I told him the truth, what God showed me. I said, well, everything's great, but this woman you got sitting over here, I don't know who she is, but she is a witch. And sure enough, she was. And she got mad because I had revealed that to that pastor because he was controlling, she was controlling that church. So she goes out here and makes a pincushion of me and starts attacking me. And once I found out what was going on, I was able to break it. But I, I have seen things like that happen over and over. And don't think this stuff's not real. It's very real. Ignoring it's not going to make it go away. But Christians need to know how to fight against it. You're not supposed to live in fear anything like that. So what I want to do today is I'm going to bring out some things you've heard me talk about before, but we're going to identify some stuff. I'm going to show you some things because I promise you this. All the little cartoon characters, all the movies of a monster with red skin, with horns, that's not, that's not Satan. Okay, that's cartoons, that's movie. Hey, don't rule hell. How many here understands that? You've heard of this? That's not biblical. Satan's not even in hell. How many knows that? That's not biblical at all. So there's so many things out here that you see people. I wish he was in hell right now. He's not. Guess what he's doing? He's walking back and forth on the earth as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Okay? And he can't devour you if you don't allow him to. Amen? So today is going to be a day of prepping you for what you're supposed to do. I'm going to teach you about your enemy and where they come from, who they are. Now, part of this I know is going to be life from another planet to some people. I got that. But I promise you it's all biblical, and I tell folks all the time, don't follow me, ever. Check out every single word that I say. 
I spent 10 hours yesterday off and on while I was trying to get other stuff done, debating again. This time it was with an atheist. I had, I had, I had debated for days with Greek Orthodox and things of this nature a while back. Well, this guy picked up on it. And he starts trying to ask me questions. That was fine. I'm trying to answer his questions. And I told Tony, I said, I'm trying to help this guy, you know, because we was trying to get stuff, stuff done around the house. And at first it was, it was good questions. But then he got mad and angry because he wanted me so bad to answer his questions about the Bible, about the Bible, about the Bible. And I kept trying to tell him, look, finally I realized this guy's an atheist. He says, look, I can try all my best to talk to you about Noah and all these things, the Moses. I can show you all that, but you can't understand it. There's no way. You're trying to sit here and read the Bible and you don't know the difference between God's word and the Bible. And I said, you're trying to disprove it so you're coming at it from a natural standpoint, but I am not. I said, I'm not trying to look at all the, quote, translation errors of that nature. I have been born again. You're not. I belong to God. You don't. I says, and because of that, his spirit is in me, and I can look at the Bible and get the word out of the Bible. The Holy Spirit can reveal things to you as a Christian that the world can't get. So I said, I can sit here all day long for 10 hours trying to help you, but that's not what your problem is. Your problem is you need to be born again. Then he got to the point, he starts calling all Christians the cult, this kind of thing. So I said, listen, I'm going to be, and I won't get mad at the guys, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying for you. Don't pray for me. I said, I'm going to continue praying for you. I promise you I will. I kept telling him that. And I said, listen, I says, bottom line is real simple. If you're right on what you believe and there is no God, I said, it takes more faith to believe that you come from a monkey or, or a walking fish than it does in Jesus Christ. And I said, if you believe that, I says, and you're right, one day when I die, I said, I lose nothing. But if I'm right and you're wrong, you're going to lose everything, including eternity. I said, you know what I'm talking about. I said, do you have fear of death? I don't. He said, why don't you? I said, because I've already died. He can't understand these things. I've tried. I'm going to try. So I go through the feast days of Moses and Noah, and it's just like talking to a wall. He had no clue what I was talking about because if you're not born again, this stuff makes no sense. You're trying to take the Bible and make it make sense in your natural mind. How many of you know that doesn't work as a Christian? That's why the world can look for all the history and philosophies and poems and try to look at all these things and, and fight your own translations and stuff. That's fine. God's Word doesn't change. How many here knows Christ is the Word? And the Word come in and took on flesh. And that flesh name was Jesus. So you got Jesus and what's in Jesus is the Word of God, which is Christ. You understand that? That's why it's so powerful. So I want to show you biblically who you're fighting against. Amen. How many of how you wants to learn this? Because I promise you this, I've been through it. And even though I was a strong Christian, I loved God, I was never taught how to fight against it. I was never taught this. So once I learned it, I want to make sure that you hear because guys, as we get close to the end times, you're going to need to know what's going on. Because it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. So let's start off with the number one enemy. Evil and Satan and demons. Is all these things real? First, let's look at um, Satan. Who is Satan? Is the, the devil? Is he real or not? I promise you this, all this fake stuff you see on TV from Cash with the Ghost and you know the witches and, and Satan as a little red dragon, that, none, none of that's biblical. That's not what he looks like at all. Okay? I've heard people tell me, I'm going to get to go to hell one day. Satan's ruling hell. How many of you realize that Satan does not rule hell? Who do you think rules hell? God Almighty does. God's the one who created heaven and hell. There's nothing out of God's control. You know, like Satan is God's enemy. He is God's enemy. But do you think Satan's got one, one, one up on God? I don't think so. God already knew what was going to happen before it even happened. So let's carry it deeper and look at this. Go over to Isaiah 14. I'm going to show you who he is because Satan used to be somebody else. How many here knows that? Okay, now watch this. This can't carry us deeper. His name used to be Lucifer. He was an angel. But let me share to show you about this angel, what, who, who and what he is. Look at verses 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? 
How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above, watch this now, the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So who was Lucifer? He's not some red horned dragon out here, even though we use that as terms, like he has red skin with horns out of his head. That's what the world wants to make it like he is. No, he used to be an angel. Not just an angel, but a certain type of angel. So let's carry it deeper. Look at what Luke 10 verses 18 says. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So, so far we already know that his name was Lucifer. We already know that he's been kicked out of heaven. Why? Because he's tried to go against Almighty God. How many here believes that? You've got to identify who your enemy is. Okay? Because he's very real. I remember in church one time I had a pastor tell me, now Greg, I wouldn't preach on that kind of stuff. I said, why? He said, because Satan might try to get you. Well, he, he's going to try to get you anyway. I mean, he really is. And if you don't fight back, he's already got you. He don't care if you're saved or not. He knows he can't stop that. But if he can stop you from being effective, if he can stop you from doing God's will, it's his plan. And most Christians are scared of it, don't understand it, don't know what to do with it, and they live in fear. Fear, 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 fear. That's not God's will at all. Amen? So let's carry it deeper. This is God's word speaks for itself. Go to Revelations chapter 12. Now watch this. It always speaks for itself. And go to verses uh, 7. And there was a war in heaven. How many here knew this? Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, which would be the Lucifer, Satan, and the dragon fought his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. It is important that you get a hold of this. And I heard, um, actually I'm going to stop right there. How many, now watch, who was cast out with him? A third, if you keep reading, of his angels was cast out with him. Now, my question to you is, what is, what is demons? Where do they come from? What is devils? Now, we've already identified Lucifer. We know he's Satan. That's biblical. It shows us that. But how many realizes the Bible does not directly tell you where demons come from? Okay? It never says that in Scripture. It gives you hints, it gives you, it gives you stories, and I'm going to show some of them to you. And the reason I'm showing this to you is because we're going to end up showing you what you're literally fighting against. And if you don't know these backstories, if you don't know what you're fighting against, you think they're all the same level. How many know that there's different levels of demonic activity? I can promise you that because <laughs> I have I personally had to fight against it. Let me show you the things I've had to, I've had, I've had to fight against. The picture of me as a young man in a Baptist church, okay? And picture me preaching. And I know this family. And the man comes up to me and says, my wife has got demons messing with her. Now watch. I think she's possessed. I say, I don't know about all that. We're going we're gonna to talk to her. I go back to my office and sit down. And I start talking to him. And I watch this woman's eyes change. And they go real dark. And all of a sudden, she looks at me and says, I hate you. This voice comes out of her. I hate you. And I'm like, whoa, I'm dealing with something here I have never dealt with before as a, as a quote, young Baptist pastor. Have y'all been there like that? I, mean, I promise you as a Christian, what are you supposed to do with that? So the only thing I knew to do was use God's word. So I start attacking what was in her and cast it out, and it finally came out. I have dealt with this kind of stuff over the years as a pastor, and it's not fun. Okay? I've been attacked like you would not believe, but now that I know who my enemy is, now I know where they come from, okay? I'm going to show you some of that. 
I promise you, when I teach you how to do this, it will work if you'll do it God's way. If you don't know about your enemy, though, and you start trying to all stand up like you know it all, Satan knows that. And he'll do all he can to attack you. Have you ever been attacked by Satan, anybody? How many of you have bad thoughts come to your mind? Anybody? Yeah, then you've been attacked by Satan. The bad things happen to you. Things are going to happen to Christians, guys. And when it happens to you, you need to know how to handle it and what to do. Amen? Are y'all ready for this? Let's, get, let's carry it deeper. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel 28. I want you to see this. Very, very powerful. Because I know Lucifer now was Satan. He hates God. So I'm trying to learn about him first. Look at this. Ezekiel 28. Look at verses 12. Now watch this. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord. Now watch. God, thou sendest up the sum of full wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. And we're talking about Lucifer here. Every precious stone was a covering of the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, asphalt, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the work, work, no, what this right here, the workmanship of the tabards of the pipes was prepared in thee, and the day that thou was created. Now, does that sound like someone who's just a red horn, old skin monster? No, he had all this inside him. Created by God. Beautiful. Now watch. Thou art anointed cherub. I know the word cherub. This is important. That covereth, and I have set thee so. Uh, thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down the midst of the stones of the fire. Now this is who we're fighting against. So he knows God. Thou was perfect in all thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity, which means sin, was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise thou hast filled the midst of, the, of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee out profane of the mountains of God, and I will destroy thee, the covering of the cherubim, from the midst of the stones. Now why is this important? He was an anointed cherub. This is important to understand who he was. He wasn't just an angel. He was a powerful angel. He was beautiful. He shined. He had music. He had everything inside. Some of him teaches, and I've heard this, but there's no way of saying this in Scripture for sure, that he was in charge of music in heaven because he was created with music in him. That's why we should praise God now. I, that part, I can't say that's biblical. I can't say that. I can say what it says right here in Scripture, though, that all that was inside him. So what you need to understand is how powerful this is. What, what are we dealing with here? You've got to understand to where he was so powerful, he was a member of that guardian cherubim. Um, it's one of the highest rank of angels in Scripture, second only to the seraphim. You have God, the seraphim, the cherubim. It's so powerful that God even sits and dwells in the middle of the cherubim. Look at Isaiah 37, verses 16. O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that uh, prevails between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. So already what you're understanding in God's word is how powerful Lucifer was, what type of angel he was, and he even had angels that he made follow him, and they did. We know that's in scriptures, a third of them. But he does a lot more than that. I want you to carry it deeper. I want you to watch this. Go to Matthew 25. Because, see, Lucifer's pride is what got him. Lucifer wanted to be above God, and we already know how powerful this is. Um, we know the angels followed him. We know the end result for the devil and his angels is going to be what? The lake of fire. How many knows that the lake of fire is going to be at the end of the thousand millennium? The Bible says the great white throne judgment. See, when you're, when you're armed with this information, as a Christian, when Satan starts messing with you, I'm going to show it in Scripture, 
So it's messing with you. You can remind him of his fate. You can remind him of where he's going to end up. I might not know all the details of where every demon comes from, but I do know Lucifer, and I know what his end result will be. Look at what Matthew 25, 41 says. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. What's it say? Prepared for the devil and his angels. So what is everlasting fire prepared for? It's prepared for the, for the devil, Satan, and his angels. And all those people out here in the world, like that guy yesterday who I was trying to talk to, who, who called us a cult, and on purpose he could put a little, a little G for God, who hates God, guess where they're going to end up being? They're going to go to the lake of fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels. Why? Because they can't be in God's presence because they hate God. But God never intended and don't want any human being there. God died for how many? I kept telling him this. God died for who? He died for all. And I keep telling people this and it freaks them out. How many knows there's not going to be one murderer, the watch, one rapist, one liar, none of these kind of people will go to hell because of what they did. Well, great, don't make any sense. Hear me out. You don't go to hell for lying. You don't go to hell for raping. You don't go to hell for stealing. No, no. Jesus Christ paid the price for all that. He, he did it for Hitler. He did it for everybody. You go to hell for rejecting the sacrifice. You go to hell in the lake of fire for going against God and rejecting the very Lamb of God who he sent to die in the place for all the sin. He died for all. If you reject him, then you go there and then you will pay the price of what you did wrong. But what you did wrong was taken away if you accept the sacrifice. Does that make any sense? Most folks miss that. We're trying to earn our way to heaven. Well, I'm not quite as bad as that guy over there. No matter how bad or how good you are, all sin is sin. And even a small sin keeps you away from God. So, Lucifer became the devil. He's accuser. He tempts human beings. You can read later, Genesis 3.15. Y'all know the story of Adam and Eve? He tempted Eve, right? She fell for it because he hates human beings. Why do you think God created Adam and Eve for because when he kicked uh, Lucifer out of heaven to the earth, all of a sudden God now says, I'm going to create a human being made in my image, and it's going to be more powerful than Lucifer himself. And then he gives power to Adam and Eve and authority over the earth and says, subdue it and take it back. Now watch. Satan don't like that. He's mad about that. So what does he do? He goes and tricks Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve is the one who gave the authority over to Satan. He has a legal right to do what he's doing. That's why he sat here with Jesus Christ, if you remember, on the earth and brought him up to the highest temples and to look out over this whole earth of all the kingdoms. I will give them to you. I remember years ago I used to say, how in the world can the devil say that to Jesus Christ? Because legally, he owns them. How many knows the earth is God's, but the world system is not? The world system is of the devil. How many knows that? That's called the Babel, Babylon. That's the world system, okay? He's trying to show this to Jesus Christ. This is why this is so important to understand what he's talking about. How many knows that Satan will tempt you just like he did with Eve? How many knows that God will test you, but Satan tempts you? God will never, ever, ever tempt you with evil. God will never tempt you with anything. He will test your faith, yes. But he'll never tempt you. So why it's important to know who your enemy is if you're going to have to fight him. And you will have to fight him or Satan's already won the battle. So now go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. Watch. It's very interesting. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Do you ever commit sin? <laughs> Anybody? We all do. But you got to understand, I showed you last week, if you remember, what part of you is perfect? But nobody's perfect. Stop, stop, stop. You're, if you stay in that mindset, you're staying in your flesh. 
You're staying in your emotions. You're staying in your soul. And you can't battle demons. You can't battle Satan. If that's how you think about yourself, you can't battle. You, you've already lost. Here's what I mean. If you're born again, believer in Christ, you've been baptized in his death, you're raised back up with a brand new spirit, your spirit man is what? Perfect. It's sealed to the day of redemption. Your spirit man cannot sin, but your soul and your flesh still can. But you've got power now over sin in your spirit man because you have his spirit inside you to overcome and fight against this evil and sin because sin came from who? The father of lies, which is Satan. Does that make any sense? But if you don't understand that, you'll sit here and say, well, we're all sinners, Greg. We're all sinners, Greg. No, we're not all sinners. Your, your flesh and your soul is. But who are you? If you've been born again, the real you is your spirit man. The real you is justified. It's sanctified. It belongs to God. Hallelujah. Does that make any sense? You've got to learn how to focus in on who you are in Christ. When you do, the word will come alive and you can fight against evil. If you don't do that and you see yourself as a nobody, then you're never going to, learn, never going to win. Because Satan knows what... He knows that you understand this part or not. Does it make any sense? So he that committed the sin is of the devil. Why? Because the sin always goes back to Satan. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this is the purpose of the Son of God. It wasn't just to come die so you could go to heaven. What was the purpose of Christ coming here and taking on flesh? What's this right here? It says, for this purpose, the Son of God, Christ, was manifested as Jesus that he might destroy the works of the devil. He come here to destroy the works of the devil. But he has not destroyed it. Yes, he has. See, what you've missed is the dispensation. We're in dispensation called grace. He has destroyed the sin but you're still seeing it on the earth because under grace, God has to give us a free will to choose good or evil just like he did in the garden. You choose which tree you're going to eat of. He already knew what was going to happen. You choose because God can't make you love him. God can't make you worship him. He can't make you come to church. He can't make you read. He can't make you do anything. Does that make any sense? True love is from your heart. And yes, Lord, yes, I will serve you, Lord. See, when I had a stuttering problem when I was a kid and I was shy and quiet, I remember being in class and I wouldn't dare raise my hand even though I knew the answer because I'd start stuttering and make a fool of myself. But when God saved me at nine years old and then I rededicated myself back to God at 18, the power of the Holy Spirit come inside me and gave me a passion for God's Word. And I will debate an atheist. I will debate people I hear in the world of God's word because I'm really willing to live and die off God's word because I know how real it is. If I don't have anything to die for or to live for, what's the purpose of living? What's the point of it? This eating and sleeping and going to work and I'm going I'm to become this day and, one, and be this in, in, in life one day. What good does that do? Nothing. But inside here will change if you'll allow it to make any sense. So I recognize, hey, I still fight sin every day. And I'm sure you do too. But the difference is, I've learned how to fight against it and Satan can't use, because I don't understand what salvation is. Salvation means past, present, and future sins have been forgiven. Does that, does that give me a license to sin? No. But the passion inside me has changed. So I know if and when I do mess up, my sin has been forgiven. All I have to do is repent of that sin and it's behind me. Satan can't bring it up and use it against me anymore. Does that make any sense? But if you don't understand this, he'll keep bringing it up and hashing up all these things in your mind of how sorry you are and you're not worthy and you're not good enough. Have y'all been there? And the world system and schools and colleges will really brainwash you. Because they hate God. Because this world system is a God of this world. Is anybody, is anybody saying this? Now let's go deeper. Y'all ready to go deeper? Now watch. Now some of this you've heard before, but this is where it's going to get interesting. How many knows in the Old Testament, the, the word devils or demons is only used three times? That's it. Three times. They use the... The word um, evil spirit 
eight times. They use the word prince, which goes back to Daniel 10, one time. But the New Testament refers to them, demons or devils over 80 times. So they came from somewhere. They manifested from somewhere. Okay? And I'm going to give you some ideas and thoughts of where I show you where they, where they actually come from. Okay? How many of you have seen a demon? Anybody ever seen a demon? How many of you ever heard of... Thomas got to see one here one day. Um, I remember years ago I was here preaching and I felt the evil presence here. And I started casting it out in the name of Jesus Christ because I saw it spiritually. See, God will allow you to go from your natural realm and see things spiritually ever so often if you allow him to. And I saw it sitting up here in the corner. How many of you ever heard that phrase about getting the monkey off your back? You ever heard of that phrase? Okay. They look like a little dark figure monkey. Some are bigger, some are smaller. And they're evil. That's just that's all I can tell you. And there's different levels and different types of principalities and powers. You're going to see that as we go through this. But as I was casting it out, it sort of ran down this aisle. And Thomas, I saw him back there, and he was kind of new to the church. I saw him do this right here. <laughs> Remember that, Thomas? And you saw something, and you didn't want to say anything about it, did you, at first? But he literally got to let him see it go out that door. Now, I know this sounds crazy to people. I don't want to think like that. That's fine. You don't have to think that way. Stay in your natural flesh and be controlled by what you see, touch, taste, and smell, and hear. That's it. That's fine. And you'll be beat up by Satan because you know there's an unseen realm out here. You know there's a spiritual world, and that world is just as real as your natural world. Matter of fact, when you go to heaven one day, well, how many here know that you're not going to go to heaven in your flesh? How many knows your flesh never goes to heaven? The part of salvation is your spirit man and your soul is being saved. It's being renewed in your mind, changing you, but he'll give you a new resurrected body at the end. Okay? And that resurrected body will not be like it is now. It'll look the same, but I can walk through that wall and I can also eat. I'm not going to be a human being at the end. I'm going to be a born-again believer used by God with a new resurrected body. I'm a child. I'm the bride of Almighty God. It doesn't make any sense. And you're going to be here for a purpose, more on that later teachings, because you're not going to be in heaven forever. I mean, he knows that. All these songs will be there for 10,000 years. No, you won't. That's not biblical, okay? Sorry, it's just not scriptural. You're not going to go to heaven and flood around in the sky somewhere. How many here knows that heaven comes back where? To the earth. So that's what the Bible says. It creates a new heaven, new earth. It comes back here for a purpose. And you have a job to do. <laughs> more on that later. I just want to show you some, <laughs> how deep this is. Now, some say that demons are fallen angels. Some say they are a race before Adam and Eve. I've taught a little bit on that kind of stuff before too. Um, I'm not going to kind of get into all, all that full stuff today here now. Some talks about UFOs. Y'all remember me, me, me talking about, I guess last year, I talked about where UFOs come from, if they're real or not. Remember that? Okay. There's a lot of kind of things and theories out here. So I can't tell you exactly which one it is. I can only show you, point you to Scripture and show you where things happen and what it means. But here's what, here's what I do know about demons for sure when you look these things up. And they're not ordinary. <laughs> they're not human beings. They are something called an incorporeal being. How many of you what an incorporeal being is? An incorporeal being is not composed of matter, um, of human beings. They're outside of time, space, physical nature. That's why I was showing you a couple years ago, last year, about UFOs people are singing, aliens. They can be very real, but they're, they're not some green space alien out here that's, that's ruling over us. Who's, no, that's, that's not it. They're called demonic spirits. It goes back to fallen angels. Okay, Why? Because they're outside human beings. They're outside of our nature. They can move quick, fast, and they can manifest themselves. You'll see it all the time in Scripture where one even came and ate with Abraham. Okay? You're going to see this over and over and over and over. Anybody seeing this? Anybody? Yes? No? Okay. I'm just trying to get you to see what you're dealing with, but God does not tell us directly here's where they exactly came from. He just gives you stories and spiritual hints of where they came from. Really don't matter where they came from. you got power over them. Amen? So I'm going to show you biblically what it's talking about. So we know they're going to end up in eternal fire. Uh, look at um, 
Matthew 8, 29. And this is something you're going to see. How many here knows there's a appointed time for demons, fallen angels, that kind of thing? Now, we already know certain ones is locked up. I'll show that to you in just a minute. But the other ones has an appointed time to burn. Look at Matthew 8, 29. Jesus Christ. He's sitting here. If you read the whole story in, in, in Matthew 8, you'll see that two people are in the tombs and they're possessed with demons. And anybody who tries to pass that way, um, these fierce demons come out and won't allow it. And let's pick it back up in verse 29. And behold, they cried out to Jesus, and they're saying this, What have uh, we to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of God? Or thou come hither to do what? Torment us before what? The time. They already know they have a limited time on this earth. They already know there's an appointed time for them to go to the lake of fire. Okay? So that, they're scared of that. And they definitely knew who Jesus Christ was. Look at Jude, the book of Jude, and look at verses 6. Now it's going to get deep here. Some of you have heard me teach on this before. Some of going to probably think I'm crazy, and that's okay. But look at Jude, verses 6. Now here's what it says. Watch. And the angels which kept not their first estate... Now, before I read this, let me just make sure you understand this. I don't have this on the screen, but you can go back and look at it for yourself later. Genesis chapter 3, verses 15. Write that down. Okay? You're going to see there to where after the fall, because of Satan tricking Adam and Eve, and he starts talking to Eve and Adam about what's going to happen to them, he talks to the serpent. Now, we always think of some snake climbing up a tree and they ate of, ate, ate of an apple. That's not what the Bible says at all. How many here knows that a serpent was not a snake? It was not a snake. Yes, no, maybe. We know it could walk, it could talk, had legs. It only become the serpent on the ground after the curse. Once he tricked Adam and Eve, God turned to Satan, Lucifer, and said, I curse you, now on your belly shall, shall, shall you go. It's not before that. Okay? Now, why is this important? I want you to get a hold of what's taking place here. A, a prophecy is spoken in Genesis 3.15. And the prophecy goes like this. God says that he, talking about Satan, will bruise thy heel, but you shall bruise his head. And what that's, that's called the highway of the seed. What that's referring to in Genesis there is later on God has a plan to bring in Jesus Christ. And we know he does it through Israel, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then all of a sudden Mary's sitting here, Holy Spirit comes, and now here sits Christ birthed out. Satan not, did not know how it was going to happen. So what does Satan do? Satan has a third and uh, the angels follow him. He took a certain amount of these angels to leave their first estate, to leave heaven. And you're going to see in Scripture to take on flesh and do something they're not supposed to do. I want you to watch. Y'all with me so far? Why is, why is Satan doing this? He's trying to stop the very seed that God prophesied in Genesis 3.15 from happening. Because he knows if he can stop that seed from being birthed, he can stop what God's trying to do. He ne that's what, what do you think Cain killed Abel for? Cain killed Abel for the very same reason. Satan come through Cain, killed Abel, trying to stop the prophet, not knowing if that's going to be Christ or not. And you'll see it happening over and over and over and over. All the prophets are being killed, but Satan cannot stop Christ. Watch this right here. Look at Jude, verse 6. And the angels was kept not their first estate, but left their own habitations. He have reserved in everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of that great day. So those particular angels who did this, where are they at right now? They're chained up in darkness. Now what did they do? Go to Genesis 6. Here's where it gets freaky. This is where most pastors will not touch this subject, but I do all the time. I don't mind it, okay? Because I'm not going to sit here and lie to the congregation. You need to know where demons, 
where fallen angels, all this kind of stuff comes from, what you're fighting against. Amen? Okay? So here, look at Genesis 6. Here's what it goes back to. And while you're turning there, let me just say one thing to you. How many of you ever heard the De- Dead Sea Scrolls? You ever heard that? Okay. In the Dead Sea Scrolls and in all, all, the earliest manuscripts, all of them, you're going to see to where the sons of God refers to angels. And why that? I'm going to get into a deeper teaching later on. I wasn't going to do it today. It's just too much about sons of God. How many here knows you today as a Christian when you get born again are children of God and you've got the power to what? To become sons of God, which means your position in Christ. Okay, that's more on that next week. But before Christ gave that to us, in the Old Testament, the word sons of God always, always, even, in, even in the inside the Dead Sea Scrolls, says it is angels. Now, why is it important? Watch. Go over to Genesis 6. Now, watch what it says. This is where it gets freaky. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. The sons of God, which would be angels, saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they did not come down here and say, hey, you're so beautiful, can you come marry me? No, that's not what it says. What does it say in the Hebrew? They come forcefully and did what? Took, look what it says, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So these Quote, fallen angels who left their habitations because they're trying to stop the spiritual seed from being birthed, which is Christ. Comes down here and walks on the earth, takes on flesh, and now takes women. I'm trying to be nice how I say it because there's kids in here, but it wasn't a marriage. How about that? Okay, they take them. Okay, that's what the Bible says. It's not my opinion. Now watch. Then God comes back with another little verse here, right in the middle of all this, and says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Now watch this. Then he goes right into the next phrase. After these angels left their habitation and took on women of the earth, okay, they had children. How many here knows what those children are called? Okay, this is where it gets from. In Hebrew, the word is called Nephilim. How many have ever heard of Nephilim or Nephilim? Okay, which means giants. Who have heard of giants? Y'all remember what David slew? Giants. Y'all remember when they came out of Egypt or came out of, uh, you know, uh, came out of Egypt bondage and they're headed for the promised land and they sent spies out and they saw what in the land? Giants. And they're scared half to death because they look like grasshoppers. Okay? What do you think is going on here? It's just called a hybrid race. I had an atheist one time tell me, I won't serve your God. It's wrong because I've seen in the Bible where God took, he names out all the different races, and there's a bunch of them, and says, your God had them go kill all the children, all the women, and all the men. And I said, yes, sir. He's like, well, how can you say that? I said, because you don't don't know God's word. Why did Israel have to do that? Because those tribes they were killing were not human beings. They were a hybrid race from the fallen angels who got with women, and it was Nephilim, giants, in those races, and God said, wipe them out. Y'all can hold this. I'm just trying to show you things that's freaky to most churches and most people. That's what the Bible says. If you don't know this, you're not going to know what you're fighting. So you're sitting here today putting your head in the sand and saying, if I don't mess with Satan, he's not going to mess with me. He's already got you. You're living in fear. Y'all seen this, anybody? I'm just trying to show what the Bible really has to say. Look at this. Now it says in verses 4, there were giants in the earth. Watch. That's Nephilim. And in those days, and it says what? And after that, after what? Watch. 
Stop right here before I carry us on. How many knows why there was a Noah's flood? Why do you think God said here? This one atheist was mad at me about Noah yesterday. Didn't understand why God flooded the whole earth. Because you don't know the story. The Bible makes it real clear. When the angels left their first estate, come down here and took on women, it wasn't just women. It was also animals. I mean, if you've seen these pictures in schools and stuff, as kind of freaky looking animals, crossbreeds of animals. Where do you think that came from? That's where all this is going back to. The days of Noah. Every single family was affected by this DNA. It was affected except one family. Guess what family that was? Noah's line. Why? Noah's line is traced back to Adam and Eve, which is the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who God has to bring the spiritual seed through. You know, get a hold of this? It goes back to Adam and Eve. That's so God had to protect that line. So God took Noah, called him righteous, not because he was a great fella, because that was the line of God, and put him in an ark and closed the doors up to protect the spiritual seed. And without that, you'd have no Jesus Christ. you will get a hold of this. And he wiped out everything on the earth, but it says there were giants in the land before and after that. So let me ask you a question. What do you think happened to the spirits of those giants on the earth? They got to go to heaven. No, they didn't. They're not even meant to go to heaven. Because they're a hybrid race, half human, half angel. This preacher sounds like he's crazy. Look it up. See, this is what's wrong with the churches today. We're not teaching the Bible. We don't want to hear this kind of stuff. Is it right or wrong? Y'all know, y'all have been to churches. But the Bible makes it real clear what, what it is and what, what's happening here. So I'm trying to show you to where the spirits of those giants could well be a part of the demonic activity that we're going to see next week. Let's finish this out. Watch this right here. Look at verses um, 4 again. For there were giants of the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God uh, came into the daughters of men and they were children to them and the same became mighty men which were of old Men of renown. Y'all seen this, anybody? Now, let's go to one more verse. Go over to Ephesians 6. I'm sharing this with you guys because of this reason. I want you to identify and understand there is fallen angels. There are some that follow Satan. You've got some who left their first estate according to Jude and did what I showed you in Genesis 6. And there was an offspring of that called Nephilim. Now, we know David and then fought against these giants. And I believe that all of them were, were wiped out. Okay? But the spirits had to go somewhere. That's why I said there was giants even after that. And you'll see them fighting and fighting and fighting. So, is this from God? No. Why, why does Satan do this for? If he can get the whole population gene pool mixed, mixed up, there's no way that God could bring Christ, the spiritual seed, to a human being if that human being is contaminated with that. Does that make any sense? So God protected that in Noah's Ark. So, this is the back story of your enemies. And here's what, this is what the Bible says in Ephesians 6.12. Watch. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, that's one of them. Against powers, that's two of them. Against rulers of darkness, that's three of them. Of this world, it says. And spiritual wickedness in high places. Can you not see right there, you got different levels of demonic activity? More on that next week, okay? But I'm showing you where they come from, okay? It's like people say, oh my God, what's going to happen if a UFO flies up here tomorrow? I'm not going to be freaked out. Why? Because I know where it comes from. I, you're not going to fool me, Satan. But I said, oh my God, God's not real. There's really green aliens with, 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 with big eyes that's more intelligent than we are. And maybe they made us. Oh my God, so they're going to worship them. No, that's foolishness. That's evil. That goes back to the fallen giants, the fallen angels. Does that make any sense? 
Yes, no, maybe. See, when you're a Christian, your eyes get opened up to truth if you want it to be. And I'm going to show you next week of how to fight against these spiritual wickedness and these different areas it gives. Okay? And we know where it comes from, which is the devil himself. And the devil can't stand it. I'm telling you this kind of stuff. He can't stand it. He don't want you to know how to arm yourself and what to do, how to fight all against this. Here's what I want in closing. If you're a Christian, I want you to be spiritually discerned. Well, children, y'all can walk into your schools. Parents, you can walk downtown. And walk into the school, walk downtown, and the Holy Spirit so strong in you, you can see demonic activity. You can spot, spot things that's not right. You can feel it in your senses, in your spirit. And then he'll tell you what to do, what to, what to do about it. How many here knows that you've got power inside you that Satan don't want you to know you have? Because if you know you've got it and God uses it through you, you can change schools, you can change nations, you can change jobs, you can change things around you. How many here knows that? But if you don't understand it, you'll live in fear. I'm going to hide it over here so I'm just waiting to go to heaven one day because you've been brainwashed by the Catholic Church and by the things of this garbage to where all we're supposed to do is sit here and wait to go to heaven. That's not biblical. No, God said, I want you to become a disciple, become my child. Walk in what I've given you. He's given you the very thing that was lost in the garden, the very thing it was before the fall. Jesus Christ come back here, hear me, and did what he did. Died, was buried, and resurrected. So he takes the keys of heaven and gives it to the church. He takes it back. You understand this? I have authority and power over Satan and all of his demons if you understand this, not on my own, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I know who he is and what he defeated it for. He destroyed the works of the devil. Y'all seen this, anybody? I'm going to hush because I can, I'm going to get riled up here. That's next, that's next week. We're going to get into some deep, deep teaching of that. And then that's going to lead us right into the week after that of the Feast of Pentecost. Very interesting teaching I told y'all 50 days ago, y'all remember the last feast? That God says, count the omer. He makes them count for 50 days all the way until two weeks from now for a purpose. And I'm not sure what that purpose is. Amen? Can we stand to our feet? I hope you got something out of this today. I hope you got identified some of your uh, things in the past. Some I know has heard this before. I've taught it many a times. Some's probably never heard it. Okay, that's okay. Don't believe me. Go, you just go check it out for yourself. It's okay. I want you to. Amen? And I promise you this. Demons, devil, Satan, Lucifer, fall, all these things are very real. Whether you want to believe it or not, they are. But we don't have to fear them. Amen? So what's your need today? If you're here today and you're not born again, I can't save you. A Romans Road prayer can't save you. How many knows that? That's not biblical either. That's just something man, man made up. Raise your hand, feel guilty, send this prayer after me. That's not salvation. Salvation is the word of God has been preached. The Holy Spirit is here. If you're convicted on the inside, saying you need Jesus Christ, then just cry out to him. You can come to the front, pray for a loved one, pray for yourself, whatever your need is. There's no, there's no formula. It's simply trusting Jesus Christ. Ask for forgiveness for your sins and he can save you. And when he does it, it will, it will change you. He'll put his spirit inside you, and you'll start seeing things differently. Is it still going to be a struggle? Yeah. A battle big time now against evil, <laughs> more so. But God loves you. So what's your need? You want to come pray for, for a loved one or come to the front? I'll pray with you, whatever, whatever your need is. There's no magical powers up here, though. Walking the aisle is not some magical thing. But it always, it's always open for you to pray if you want to. But you can get saved in your bathroom. Who here knows that? Let's listen to the Holy, the Holy Spirit right now. What's, what's your need? You need to be healed, set free, delivered. I can't heal you, but I've seen hundreds of healings. I've seen some not ever healed. I can't explain it. I'm not God. All I know is Christians, we're just supposed to just trust God, have faith, and believe, and speak truth, and watch what happens. Sometimes we say healing, sometimes we don't. But the Bible, the book of James says, come to the front and we anoint you. And we pray over you. That's what, that's what the Bible says. Amen? So what's, so what's your need? Okay. 
I'm going to stop right here for today. I hope you got something out of this. I pray uh, that you'll do your own looking and studying and getting ready for next Sunday. But if you can't come back on Wednesday, I promise you, we, 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 we can go deeper than this. And we can ask questions, that kind of thing. Uh, I want you to. I don't have all the answers, but I can sure look them up for you. <laughs> Amen. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of that. I'm going to be the first one to tell you, I do not know it all. Okay? At all. So don't ever look at me. I'm the same person as you are, struggling with the same problems you've got. Okay? We all have. We all have we're all human beings. Amen? But God has the answers. So Gary, if you don't mind closing in prayer and go ahead and bless our food, y'all stay and eat with us if you possibly can.